Good morning. Thank you for being with us, our virtual congregation. We love you. We are so glad that you are here. So as I begin this morning, I just want to let you know, all of you who participated in our Christmas giving project, uh, the report is that it was a fantastic, fantastic day. We thank you so much for your generosity and your love and spirit and consciousness in this whole thing. It was a great, great event. Gail Pilat says everything was just amazing. So I thank you so much for helping to make Christmas uh, a wonderful thing for many, many people. Uh, so today, uh, I thought I would start by telling you that, you know, um, when, when I was young uh, and I came to California, uh, I think that God used a hook to get me to California so I could find this teaching, really. Because uh, in the early 80s, uh, I was in my early 20s, and this uh, teaching, Finding the Science of Mind, I can tell you honestly, changed, in fact, even saved my life. Um, and I can tell you in all honesty, the life I have lived since finding the science of mind, I believe is completely different than the life, the direction my life was going before finding the science of mind. So if science of mind saved my life, if using this teaching and these principles really helped me to turn my life around, why would I not continue to avail myself of these principles and allow them to help me during this time that we are living through right now that is such a unique time, most of us have not been through anything like this before. I think this is the perfect time to really get in there and say, how can I use this teaching in an even greater and deeper and more effective way? So one of the things we would have to look at if we're using the teaching is to ask ourselves, wow, how did I get here? I mean, my life, how did it get to look like whatever it looks like right now? So basic science of mind teaches each and every one of us this from the scriptures, it's done unto you as you believe. It's done unto you as you believe. It's done unto you as you believe. Oh. Now, if we combine this with Ernest Holmes' statement that in order to have a demonstration, we have to have both a conscious and subjective agreement, I think this is enormously, enormously important because without both a conscious and a subjective agreement, that demonstration will not come forward. And you know what happens is people's minds go to this place where they say, well, I want it. I know this is what I want. I accept it. I believe it. I think I can have it. Why don't I have it? Well, all of that is the conscious mind, and all of why they don't have it is in the subjective, the universal subjective that Ernest Holmes calls the seat of memory. Anything that's ever happened to you, anything that's ever been said to you, anything you've ever experienced is all stored in your subjective mind. And so that desire has to pass through from conscious mind into your subjective mind before it can demonstrate out here. And so if we have conflicting ideas, my conscious mind says, yes, I want it, yes, I believe it. My subjective mind maybe says something else, like I don't deserve it, or I haven't worked hard enough, or these other people are better than me, or they've worked harder, they have a greater education, they're smarter, they've done it longer, blah, 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 all those external reasons and excuses we might listen to those, but it's up to us. We all say, you know, I want healing. I do. I want to have healing. I want to have abundance. I want to have love. I want to have creative fulfillment and professional success in my life. So perhaps at a very conscious level, we do want these things. But you know, for everybody individually, the subjective is a very personal thing. What is in our subjective mind? What, what we have in our subjective mind? You know, uh, Phineas Quimby, uh, one of the founders of New Thought, who I really like, he says that everybody comes into this life as a blank slate. But everybody we meet writes something on our slate. And he says, and I know some people have written some very unkind things on my slate. And I believe that's probably true for all of us. But it becomes our job as mature spiritual adults who are doing a daily spiritual practice to clean that slate again and again and again. But you know, when, when we are not in circumstances where we feel like we're in uh, control. You know those circumstances like many of us have lived through in these past nine months where we are reacting a lot and reacting a lot, reacting a lot. But, but see, the thing is, I believe that we as spiritual beings are actually of a higher order. I don't think we have to react. I think we have the possibility because we are beings of consciousness, we have the option to respond. You know, I get to choose who I'm going to be in these experiences. 
We're told things like, stay home, you know? Well, you know, I think that's a little challenging for the American spirit, if I tell you honestly, because, you know, we like this idea of being rugged individualists. You know, I don't think Americans really like to be told what to do. Um, and so I think that just that, that alone, that we don't like to be told what to do, makes this very challenging for us. But I think it's important that we think about the collective, the whole. That there are other people involved here, and many of them are suffering and struggling much more than we individually are. So for the sake of everyone, for the sake of everyone, could I work on responding more and reacting less? Could I make an effort and do what I'm being told to do? See, I think that if we are willing to follow the instructions we are be giving at this time, I think that that obedience supports everyone, ultimately, but in particular, I think it supports our frontline workers and the essential service people, um, because these people are placing themselves at risk for our benefit every day. They are a blessing to the collective, right? They're sacrificing their being of service. Now, we teach basic, basic to science of mind. We teach that God is love and that that love is everywhere equally present. So where there is love, there cannot be fear, right? And so that becomes my job, to have that consciousness, to be that consciousness of love so that all fear is eradicated. You know, my job, our job is to be that space, that consciousness that infuses every situation with an energy of love. Because, you know, where the light is, the darkness cannot exist, right? So I have to think, okay, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, all of those areas, I have to make my greatest possible effort to be the light, to express the light, to entertain the light, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. Because science of mind says again and again that there is only one power. Fear is not the power. Darkness is not the power. Love, light, is the power. Fear and darkness, when I think about it, they are actually an absence of something. They are the absence of love. They are the absence of light. So when I fill my mind with love, and if I keep my mind filled with loving thoughts, those thoughts of fear and doubt and worry and dread, all of that starts to diminish. Isn't that amazing? If I can just stay focused on the loving things. So at this time of year, it's natural that gratitude comes up for us as an aspect of love. Gratitude in our hearts. I think we all want to go to those deeper places in consciousness. I do. I want to be a deep spiritual person. And so when I sit with that again and again, what comes to me is the deeper places are not just about me. They're not just about you. The key to getting through this experience, I think, the key to being in those deeper places is for each of us to try in some way on a daily basis to be there for someone else. I think that's what it comes down to. You know, so, and, and what do I mean by that? If what you do is you think of somebody who you know would benefit from your prayer, pray for them. Absolutely pray for them. And now I'm going to tell you something else, though, because we're so isolated at this time. Let somebody know, hey, I thought of you today and I included you in my prayer. Don't make a big deal of it. Just let them know. You know, I think you could call someone. There are so many people who are alone right now who would benefit from a call just to say, here you say, I'm thinking of you, you are on my mind, I wanted to say Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, have a good one, I love you. You know, it's, um, you can send somebody a card, you can send somebody an email, you can send somebody a text, you could do something for somebody. But, you know, this is, this is what we teach is the key to happiness, is to think of other people first. And when you think of other people first, you always get the grace, you get the fallout from that. So I think that's, that's the key to us continuing to navigate through this experience. And I know many of us believe we see the light at the end of the tunnel, but you know it's not going to be the same when we are on the other side of this. And I don't think it's supposed to be the same. We're supposed to be changed by this experience. This was not just like a, 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 a random road bump for us. Um, we move really, really fast in the world we live in, don't we? I mean, we live in a big city here, and people are always rushing, 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 rushing. But I think that running around like that, 
I think being really, really busy is a tactic that human beings use often to avoid going to that deeper place spiritually, uh, to avoid really contemplating and reflecting on where my life is and where I want it to be and how do I continue to cultivate a consciousness that that life I want is just the natural outcome of that consciousness. You know, in metaphysics, I've heard again and again that every problem comes with its own solution. And that's a lot like the answer is within because if the answer is anywhere, where is it gonna be for us in science of mind? Well, the answer is always gonna be within. And so this this that we are going through in these last months gives us an opportunity to think a lot about our lives. You know, can I sit quietly approaching the end of the year and look really deeply at my life? And this is what I want to invite us all to do with these remaining days of 2020. Ask yourself, who do I need to forgive? You know, we know scientifically that spirituality, forgiveness, having a spiritual practice, praying, meditating, studying, that kind of, all of that strengthens um, our immune system, right? But dread and fear and panic do no good for us spiritually at all. And obviously they're not gonna help our immune system much either. So what if we make a conscious effort to focus on the joys in our life between now and the end of the year. Look, if, if, just do this to the end of the year. You know, what's good now? What can I celebrate? What can I appreciate? Who can I appreciate? You know, and, and these things I have put off, the people I need to check in with, uh, the people I need to reach out to, why don't I do that? You know, Ernest Holmes says in our textbook that karma is not kismet. And so I remind us we have a choice who we are as we move through this experience. It's not like, well, I just got to get through it and the cards will fall where they fall. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I can be more of my best self as I move through this experience, or I can be more of my not so best self, only I know what I get from that. So I affirm we will all be better people because of this. Wouldn't that be great that if at the end of this, when, when COVID is completely over and there's none of it, we all look at each other and say, wow, we are all so much better because we went through that experience. I've heard the, the written character in Chinese is, uh, for, for crisis is the same as the written character for opportunity in Chinese. And I think that's kind of interesting. So we could use this as an opportunity right now. We could start right now, anytime between now and right now is a really, really good time to start. So if the last nine months you haven't done a thing, it's okay. It's okay. Let's let that all be water under the bridge. And right now, starting right now, anytime between now and right now, is the perfect time. We can say, I want to change gears. I know that. You know, often people run around and just stay busy, particularly at this time of year, so that they can avoid that deeper spiritual work, as I said. But we get through this. Here's the, the bottom line is we get through this when we don't make it all about us, you know, and I know we love to do that, you know, because remember the key to happiness is to think of other people first. So what if I call one person who I know is elderly or alone every day, every day, every day? I think, wow, I look at this time like being a huge course correction for all of us. You know, this is going to end, but how will I be when it does? How will we all be when it does right now? I need to be proactive. If I knew I was going to have all of this time, if I knew I was going to have these last nine months, what would I do? You know, if I knew, oh, well, I, oh my God, I would, I would double my meditation time. I would take up the guitar. I would do more yoga. I would walk five miles a day, I would learn a foreign language, I would read the great novels of the world, I would garden, I would cook exotic things, blah, blah. I, how much have I done of that? I don't know about you, I, I, you know, but the thing is, all of that stuff, you know, listening to beautiful music, and, and you know, that, that nourishes our soul in this very difficult time. You know, it's so easy to fall asleep, it's so easy to lose our way, and I have certainly lost my way again and again. So we come back to this, that it's easy to be negative, it's easy to be depressed, it's easy to not have time for other things or other people, but right now is the time to take more effort 
You know, to be more positive. We have to be disciplined in this time. And I'm certain that if we are, that is going to pay off. So ask yourself right now, what's most important in my life? And am I tending to that with a wonderful, loving heart and consciousness? Hmm? So here we are, speeding toward Christmas and the new year, and I think the best advice I could give all of us is be nice, please. Check in on someone and tell somebody just for the heck of it that you love them. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment, recognizing that we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite loving spirit, that that spirit of God that's everywhere is uniquely individualized by means of each and every one of us. And we are that place where the secret place of the Most High is uniquely expressed. So knowing our connection with God and also on the unseen side of life that we are all connected with each other, I speak the word for each and every one of us. I speak the word that practicing the science of mind is transforming our lives from the inside out, that we move forward toward Christmas and the new year and the ending of this whole COVID experience with love in our heart, with kindness in our words and actions, I know that good comes from every one of us out into the world, that there is someone we can call or someone we can do something for, someone we can send a note to, and it helps lift the vibration of the entire planet, that touching one life absolutely does make a difference. And so I declare here and now for each and every one of us that the holidays ahead are a blessed and sacred time, that we are blessed exceedingly each and every day, and so here and now, we let our prayer go out from our hearts, from our consciousness, to touch all people on the face of the earth everywhere. And in particular, all of those people who are our first responders and people doing critical jobs for us, people who are struggling through this time, we speak our word of prayer and blessing and grace and love on each and every one of them. We bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, and all of those people we hold in our heart. We see them in our mind's eye right now, and we place our spirit blessing upon them, knowing that they are surrounded and filled with the very love of God. And so with a grateful heart, knowing for each and every one of us the path ahead is filled with light and love, I say, thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, amen.